Welcome back. It's brew day again. Um, so today I'm going to be brewing this Muntins handcrafted American style IPA. So this is what I would describe as being a, a top of the range premium kit or at least that's what it's priced at. Um, this cost me around about £25. Um, so it's kind of in price directly comparable to something like the Festival Razorback um, or the uh, Young's American IPA. Um, both around the same sort of money. In fact, the Festival one's slightly cheaper. So it's probably about £23.95, something like that. Um, the Razorback, I have to say, is probably one of the best kits I've brewed. It's excellent. Um, so I thought I'd give this a try. I've seen some good feedback um, online, on YouTube and on the forum saying this was a good kit. And in fact, I think one of the YouTubers uh, got sent a bottle of this. He had no idea what it was. The sender didn't tell him what it was. Um, he didn't know if it was all grain, part grain or anything. And he did. He wasn't able to tell whether this was a kit or not. So that's kind of what made me want to have a go at this. Um, I've done Muntins kits before. They've always been pretty good. It's top of the range. It's, you know, it's it's in terms of price. So we're expecting you know a fair amount out of this kit. Um, I've got high hopes for it. it. Looks good. Feedback's good. So let's have a look what's in the box. So, um, as you'd expect, we've got some um, dry hops, 30 grams. Okay, so it's not a huge amount, and comparing that again to the Razorback, I think you get 75 grams of dry hops to add into that. So, um, there's a fair amount of more in the, um, the festival kit. So, it says on this summit, hop pellet, 30 grams. All right, so let's put here. some instructions, brewing instructions. Some yeast, American ale yeast. All right, so there's six grams of yeast. So that doesn't sound a lot of yeast for this kit. Um, it's 3.6 kilograms of malt in here, uh, which is supposed to get it to, I think, five and a half percent. Yeah, ABV, five and a half percent. So six grams of yeast sounds a bit tight to me. Um, you know, all the other sort of kits in this range either come with 10 grams. I'm, I'm not even sure, I think the festival one might even come with 20 grams of yeast. So six grams of yeast seems a bit light to me. That's kind of what you'd expect to get under the lid of a Cooper's can or something like that. Not a premium kit, six grams. Anyway, so we've got two cans of this in here and nothing else. All right, hmm. so uh, these, these cans, well, they must be 1.8 kilogram cans each. So there is quite a lot of malt in these. And again, comparing it to the festival kit, you get uh, two pouches of malt and some dextrose sugar to bump up the alcohol. So you've actually got a lot more malt in these kits for a start, or a bit more malt, um, and no sugar. So. There's not much in this kit. Um, again, comparing it to the festival kit, you get a, a little hop straining bag that goes with it. You get a lot more hops, you get a lot more yeast, you get a bag of dextrose to add with it, and you also get a pre-weighed bag of dextrose for priming your beer as well. So there's nothing along those lines in this box. It looks a bit scant, to be perfectly honest, for what well i think this is the most expensive beer kit they sell on there i don't know so there needs to be some magic in these cans to justify that price um what that magic is i don't know but 25 quid two cans of malt extract small bag of hops and a very small bag of yeast first impressions not particularly impressed but you know, this might prove to be the best beer I've brewed. Um, the proof is going. So I'm back for the tasting. Um, 
So this has now been in the bottle for nearly 10 weeks, nine and a half weeks. And I have to confess that I have recorded this segment already about four weeks ago. Um, but something about this beer was troubling me. So A, I wanted to give it a little bit more time to condition. And B, I wrote to Muntins or emailed them um, with my concerns about it asking for an explanation. So I also wanted to give it a bit more time so um, I could get a reply back from them. So we're now nearly 10 weeks in the bottle. Um, and I'm gonna go straight in and open it up and pour it and uh, I'll talk about it on the way. So basically, um, the thing that was troubling me about this is that it had a sort of unusual smell and taste to it. And when I say unusual, I don't mean unpleasant. Um, it was kind of a bit sort of smoky, almost creosote type whiff to it, which was unusual, but not totally unpleasant. So uh, right at the start, I sort of mentioned my concerns about the small packet of yeast. Um, and as you'll see when I pour this as well, is it pours and looks extremely dark for an IPA. Um, Certainly not the, the light gold colour that uh, it shows on the picture, on the box. So, this is it. Um, yeah. I can still kind of smell that smoky smell. It's, there is a sort of sweet, malty aroma from it and you can you get a bit of the, the kind of hop coming through. As I said at the start, there wasn't a huge packet of hops. It was about 30 grams, I think, of summit. So you get a bit of aroma from that, but there is, there's definitely something there in the background. So um, I wrote to Muntins, explaining that there was this kind of unusual flavor, um, and did they have any kind of explanation for it? And I received a kind of stock response from them saying that Basically, and I'd explained my process that I'd left it for almost two weeks to ferment um, in a controlled environment, totally sanitised, never had any problems with that kind of method before. And uh, the response back was that um, it was likely that I'd left, because I'd left it for nearly two weeks, um, I would have got something called autolysis, which is kind of where the yeast starts to die and gives off, off flavours. But problem I had with that is that this was nowhere near finished uh, by four to six days as it had said in the instructions. So the kind of suggestion was that I hadn't really followed the instructions where it said ferment to four to six days, but it was nowhere near finished um, by four to six days. Um, so uh, I sort of posted my thoughts on a few of these Facebook uh, groups asking for suggestions. Um, and the general consensus was that that, that was absolute rubbish. Um, uh, as my thoughts were, uh, because you know, most people uh, ferment for nearly two weeks to, to make sure that it's fully finished. And uh, looking back on my records, this was at um, 10 16, I think, on day 12. So, you know, needed two weeks really to finish. So I kind of ruled that out as one explanation. I emailed them back explaining that, and I got a bit of a more detailed response in that they thought it might be something to do with the Harris Pure Brew that I'd used in it. Um, and um, I don't know, but I, I think they were clutching straws, but in, to be completely fair to them, um, they sent me another kit. So I've got another one to try. I don't know about that. I will, will, I'm gonna have a think about how I'm gonna approach that one, but I'm gonna make a separate video on it. But I'm reviewing this as it is now. So as I said, you can see how dark it is. Um, it's it's pretty dark <laughs> for an IPA. Um, it's got this burnt sort of smoky smell to it. And it's there in the background. It's not totally unpleasant. But it's very malty. There's a sweet maltiness from it. It's a bit hoppy, not entirely brilliant. Um, yeah. 
So, what can I say? I don't know. It hasn't really turned out as I was hoping. Um, let's hope the next one does. Uh, but uh, I don't think I'll be using the standard yeast that, came, that comes in the box. I'll be upgrading <laughs> the yeast to something else. Um, and I'll probably chuck in a bit more hop as well. I think it could do a little bit more sort of dry hop. So um, I might chuck some Cascade in or something like that. But, you know, um, I'll drink them. So it's not been a complete waste. It's not going to go down the sink. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll reserve judgment until the next one. Cheers anyway.